I'm Sonia Schaefer with Simply Charlotte Mason. You know, narration is such a powerful tool when it's done correctly. The foundational way is simply retell what you read or heard in your own words. If you're just getting started with narration, you may need to start with reading only a small portion, a paragraph or one page, in order to retain all of the information, process it, mix it with any other ideas already in your mind, confirm any correlations that you noticed, and then put it into the right sequence, form it into coherent sentences, and give it back. There's a lot of mental work that's going on in narration. As your student gets more comfortable and more fluent with those shorter passages, you can start nudging out the length that is read before asking for a narration. Allowing your student to narrate orally is a great place to start. It's easier to keep up with your thoughts when you're talking rather than trying to keep up in writing. But again, as your student becomes comfortable with handwriting and fluent with oral narrations, you can make the transition to written narrations, usually around age 10 or so. Written narrations bring a couple of challenges of their very own. First, how do you encourage correct spelling without allowing your student to look back at the chapter in the book? And second, how do you increase the difficulty level as your student gets older? Written narrations are the training ground for composition. And if your student is going to become fluent in various types of composition, expository, descriptive, persuasive, and narrative, he needs to have practice in those types of narrations. Well, narration note cards answer both of those challenges beautifully. And today I'm pleased to let you know that we have two new sets of narration note cards to add to our collection. We now have note cards available for Ancient Egypt and her neighbors, and for A Castle with Many Rooms, The Story of the Middle Ages. Narration note cards help you take narration to the next level by providing chapter-specific narration prompts in a variety of difficulty levels and by providing the spelling of key words from each of those chapters in the book. The cards give you three narration prompts to choose from. You can assign a beginner prompt, or an intermediate prompt, or an advanced prompt. Now, they're not labeled that way, so your student isn't going to know which level you've selected for him. Feel free to mix them up, too. Some days you might use the beginner prompt, and some days you might give your student the intermediate assignment, and other days challenge him with that advanced narration prompt. Or you can just give him the card and let him choose which one looks interesting to him. Variety in those prompts will help narration time stay fresh. For example, your student might be instructed to draw a picture and tell about it, to write an interview that reflects what happened in the chapter, to trace cause and effect, to compare and contrast, to draw a map and label it, or draw a diagram and label it or tell about it, to write an obituary, to create a newspaper article, or to write diary entries from one character's point of view. All of these prompts require the student to think through what was read, to make it his own, and to work with it on a personal level. That mental interaction is what helps to make the knowledge his own possession. You see, there's a difference between knowledge and information. Charlotte described it this way. The distinction between knowledge and information is, I think, fundamental. Information is the record of facts, experiences, appearances, etc., whether in books or in the verbal memory of the individual. Knowledge, it seems to me, implies the result of the voluntary and delightful action of the mind upon the material presented to it. 
The child who's got knowledge will certainly show power in dealing with it. He will recast, condense, illustrate, or narrate with vividness and with freedom the arrangement of his words. The child who has only information will write and speak in the stereotyped phrases of his textbook or will mangle in his notes the words of his teacher. School Education, pages 224 and 225. So the variety of narration prompts given in these narration note cards encourages your student to move from information to personal knowledge. And the key words, listing people, places, dates, and vocabulary from each chapter, assure that your student will spell those words correctly without looking back at the chapter. Here's a comment we received from a homeschool mom who's been using the narration note cards. She says, The narration note cards by SCM have transformed our narrations to a new level. I often found myself asking for basic narrative narrations from my middle school students. I knew I needed to raise the bar, but doing so happened rarely. By utilizing the note cards, our narrations have grown from mostly narrative into expository and descriptive. They are thought-provoking and at times spark creativity. I am easily able to give my older students narrations at their levels. The benefits don't stop with narration prompts. My children have been able to utilize the word bank on the back side for spelling and to add depth. I was a concerned mama who may have shed a tear or two over my oldest son's lack of quality written narrations. I have sat with mouth agape more often than not because of the growth he has shown since expanding our narrations with the cards. Tammy B. We are continuing to add new titles to our collection of narration note cards. The two new titles available today are Note Cards for Ancient Egypt and Her Neighbors and A Castle with Many Rooms. We always like to celebrate the release of a new resource by offering special introductory pricing for the first couple of weeks that it's available. So check out the special pricing and download a free sample to see how narration note cards can take narration to the next level for your students.